A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for keeping it Y254 on this Tuesday morning. My name is Shiko Kaitani, taking over from Barry Moses, Kalami Val, and of course, Hilda Wadidi. We do appreciate your company every single day on your favorite breakfast show. That SMS number is 22162. Please begin your text message with YM254 if you want to interact with us. And of course, I want to welcome you yet again to another edition of Hello Day. Big up to all those of you who are uh, sending in your text messages also through our social media platforms we do appreciate you we also do want to say a happy happy birthday to our social media manager mr masai <laughs> there's a job going on in studio to all those who are in labor on labor day <laughs> well <laughs> big up to mama masai of course on this particular day and happy birthday to you masai we do love you so happy holidays to you and yours of course as you know it is labor day and so today the focus is all about celebrating our hard-working kenyans okay right here of course in the 254 and of course across the globe we are appreciating those of us who actually get up in the morning and get that work done whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you are, of course, in um, uh, in a situation where you are an employee. And so um, moving on from the discussion that Hilda Wadivi had earlier on about labor laws, right now we actually do want to focus on labor relations. And that's all about how you and I can create a better working relationship with our employers. And what is it that we ought to know? Well, this time around, I am so happy to have yet again in studio Lucy Mutugi, who is the HR manager at Tangazo Letu. And she's here to tell us more about what we ought to know as employees. Karibu sa. Thank you. Yes, have you been? I've been good. Thank you for having <laughs> me back. Yeah. yeah. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Yes. We missed you. We are happy that you're here to shed some more light in terms of, um, you know, what we need to know um, as employees. Okay. So, Karibu Sana to the studio. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So, Lucy, uh, let's start off with the basic rights that one needs to actually know or at least have access to when getting into employment. Because, as you know, this is a youth channel. Yes. Uh, so many of us are actually branching off from that college phase mm -hmm. into you know work. into work phase yeah okay um the first and foremost thing is to recognize that it's already difficult getting a job yeah so once people get a job sometimes they let excitement take over them yeah so some of the things that um you should concentrate on once you're getting into the job market fine you've identified that job you've been accepted for that specific role make sure there's a contract especially if your engagement with your employer will be more than three months. Yeah. So what should be contained in this contract, of course, is your name, the name of the employer, what your job will be, that is your job title or your job role, mm -hmm. if the working hours, and um, also how you're going to be paid. Is it weekly? Is it at the end of the month? And they should be very specific. Yeah. Um, because one of the key things you'll find is um, people do word of mouth, and yes. people get... The, there's a lot of frustration mm -hmm. because um, someone will say oh this guy has refused to pay me then you ask him okay do you have a contract oh we had agreed you know i came and he told me this help me true. yes this so it's causing a, a lot of um, discontent among the youth mm -hmm. because now they feel that people are taking advantage of them yes so me i would tell them to first make sure they have a written document yeah and then go a step further and ask for a job description by the way, know your jobs. Yes. Yet you're being told now, <laughs> yes. and then next yes. week you're being told. Yes. By the way. And by the way, could you do this and this and this for me? And you say that has nothing to do with what I, exactly. I came here to do. Yeah. Exactly. Because then again, if you if you don't have a specific job description, one, once it comes to performance evaluations, mm. you find that you're failing in the key things you should be doing because you're doing other things other than what you should be focused on. By the way, that yes. thing known as an appraisal is very important. It and is. an appraisal is more of just the like you say, it's an evaluation yes. of what you've been doing. So if you're kind of like all over the place, how, how can someone evaluate what and you're on about? And that gives now your employer reason to let you go. Ah. Because it now appears you're not being productive or yes. the output that was being expected for you mm -hmm. is not being met. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having a contract and a job description should be the key items. Yeah. And also knowing that even as you're changing from college to working life, um, have an idea about where you're going to be working. 
Uh, what type of clients do they deal with? What type of business are they in? What is their vision? Yeah. Um, sometimes I know that our first jobs are not what we intend them to be, but yeah. you also have to just give your best. Mm -hmm. Also know the kind of environment that you're going to so that you can also know how, I, how am I supposed to dress. Yes. You find people dressing very... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. And you're wondering, okay... So maybe there's uh, there's some information that is not clear. So yes. they should also do some research, do research about where they're going to be working, yeah. um, the type of people who work there, mm -hmm. and also how to engage with people there. Because now once you get into the working space, it's very different from college life. Yeah. Very, you need You can just be so casual, <laughs> yes. and just walking about yes. how you feel like. I, I think that one of the things that really does help, I, I believe, and maybe you can add on to this or correct me if yes. I'm wrong, is, you know, just finding a way to mingle with employees of that who are already yes. existing in the company. Yes. So whether it's going to the cafeteria yes. or, you know, just hanging about with mm -hmm. them, like it's, it's always nice it's to, very important. to be friendly yes. as, you're, as you're getting your orientation. Yes, it is. It's mm. very, um, and also not to get too friendly until you know the people. Yeah. Because yeah. then again, people can have a bad impression mm -hmm. of you. If you're too overly friendly, they'll be like, <laughs> something not okay right. i like that i like that so what are some of the uh, most overlooked general principles about labor mm -hmm. that that you see of course you've talked about that you know a contract is one of them but yes. maybe you can expound on a few other things that we overlook um actually we also overlook a lot of um, policies that are within our labor laws mm. um for instance we overlook uh, one that we call osha this yeah. is the Occupational Safety and Health Act, whereby if you're working in a, say, a manufacturing plant, mm -hmm. there are certain things that are supposed to be provided to you as an employee. Mm -hmm. It could be you need a helmet, you need gloves, you need goggles, but you'll find that some of our companies don't provide that. Yes. So it's a risk. Uh, not only do, uh, do they make the employee work in an unsafe place, mm -hmm. they also don't train, and that is a requirement. Once someone comes on board, you're yeah. supposed to be trained. Maybe it's using a particular machinery plant. Yeah. Um, probably straight from college, you've never used that machine. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that actually is in the, in the law is that you should provide sufficient training before yes. now you leave someone. Mm -hmm. to do that particular task By the way. so there's training there's supervision mm -hmm. and of course the um, providing of safety equipment and materials for you to do your work without feeling at risk mm -hmm. then uh, of course we have the other one which um, sometimes this one is a gray line yeah. it's a sexual harassment yeah um, by the act, um, any organization that has more than 20 employees, yeah. you're supposed to have a sexual harassment policy mm -hmm. that has been um, provided to the employees and yeah. even understood and signed. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, organizations are even required someone to come and take their employees through that training. Wow. Yes, mm -hmm. so um, once you have that in place, then people understand that this particular action of mine mm -hmm. could be construed to mean this mm -hmm. because um, the sexual harassment policy covers unwanted sexual advances it could be implied yes <laughs> it's very be, common yes. very common even this issue. whatsapp videos we send each other yes. you know you could send it to the wrong person oh what <laughs> yeah you could <laughs> and this person would be like why are you sending me such a video yeah you know so we should also be that's why i'm saying you should also know the type of people you work with there mm -hmm. are some who can take jokes others work is work yes after work don't send me funny things don't be just some buzzing <laughs> yes. videos of deputy yes. governors exactly. of your of your end. Exactly. I mean, you know, you know, totally unnecessary yes. and inappropriate. Yeah. And uh, especially um, then the other thing is most of the time we think sexual harassment only happens to female employees. But nowadays we are finding also a lot of male employees being harassed by their female superiors. Yeah. So it's across the board mm -hmm. because sometimes mm -hmm. you're told if you don't do this, then I can't promote you. Yes. So that it becomes a very, very tricky thing. Yeah. So people should be aware of the do's and don'ts. Yeah. And also how once they feel that um, someone has crossed the line, what next? Yes. Uh, most organizations have, uh, you can go to either a manager you feel very safe with yes. because this is confidential information yes. so you can't have it going around before proper investigations have been conducted mm -hmm. because then again it can also be a witch hunt yes maybe you're looking you're like ah that guy refused to go out with me 
I'll show him. Yeah. So you want to set up someone. Yeah. So it's very it's very sensitive. Yeah. Um, and then uh, investigations, of course, have to be conducted. Okay. Okay. Uh, luckily, unfortunately, you remember the incident of the Makerere student. Yes. How she felt she had to, you know, have a selfie. Yes. And you see, for her, then the action is immediate. Mm -hmm. But most people are not that lucky to have that kind of evidence. Yes. So there needs to be room for proper investigations to be done and yes. for everything to be transparent. Okay, okay. Yeah. So if you have um, WhatsApp messages, emails, yeah. you bring those forth now. As evidence. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but I like what you're saying that w you have a right to know yes. what to do yes. in such and such a situation. So this actually boils down to orientation. Yes. Every new employee has the right to orientation to know how the company functions and what they need to do in certain cases. It does. Okay. And actually what is normally done uh, during your orientation, you're presented with an employee handbook. Yes. Now the employee handbook for uh, different organizations differ. Yeah. Because... Um, we could be having a handbook for a thousand people it could be yeah. for 40 people so people generally do it differently but it covers basically the same thing mm -hmm. because even in that employee handbook you're supposed to know what is the disciplinary code yes. for this organization that way um, the employer has already told you the expectations that he has of certain behaviors right. and if you don't conform then this is what will happen so that you don't get shocked mm -hmm. you've been coming perpetually late three times <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. you get a, a yeah. termination letter and you're yeah. like but i didn't know mm -hmm. yeah so you're supposed to be provided with that the employee handbook will cover the code of conduct that's yes. the behaviors that govern um, how people should behave while at their workplace. I like that. I like that. Let's let us let us stop there <laughs> for one minute. How people should behave, behave in the workplace. Yes. Let's talk about office etiquette. Yes. And I I know as young people find yeah we are energetic. Mm -hmm. We can get you know over like just excited over and beyond. You yes. Know? So. Can you advise about office etiquette? Because sometimes we don't get it. We are hugging a lot. We are kissing a lot. We, <laughs> we get to work. We are screaming at the top of our lungs. As it is just, it's fun times for us. Yes. You know, but we forget we, we are, are supposed to be professional. We are supposed to be professional. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about office conduct and even what is expected um, from you by your employer? Okay. For the code of conduct, um, you'll find that the employer normally lists the acceptable behaviors. Yeah. That is, come, um, that's where they live and cover how they probably want you to dress for work. Yeah. If it's a very strict place like a bank, maybe you come formally dressed. If it's an NGO, you yeah. can be casual smart. Yeah. And then uh, also it will cover the reporting times mm -hmm. and uh, how, how long your lunch break should be because sometimes we find we have become too casual we go for lunch for two three hours and we come <laughs> back <laughs> yeah but yeah. you know it's under the code of conduct that yeah. every uh, most by kenyan lawyer are entitled to a one hour lunch break yes so it will tell you if you are reporting to the work at eight you report at 8 a.m yeah. um but of course there are certain situations that you won't make it on time yeah so you're explained for what you should do mm. um should you see that you'll not make it in time just let your supervisor know yes. in good time yeah then most of the time after four hours mm. if you've been away from the office uh, more than four hours that's considered a half leave day wow yes mm -hmm. so you you're going there doing your errands thinking ah, it's business as usual you come and you meet you've been deducted half a day that's because you've been away for yeah more a uh, half of the day yes so sometimes you'll just say okay maybe your child has fallen ill yeah so you've said i've gone to the hospital and depending on the employer then sometimes employers are very considerate they'll tell you okay you just deal with your child um come back when everything yeah. is sorted okay but sometimes you're not also lucky to get that understanding it's employer true, so true. you need to know what do i do do i now call my relative to come and take over and yes. it also depends on what are you doing that day at work it's true. it could have been a very important mm -hmm. thing that no one else could do other than you okay so you have to weigh um Sometimes it's a catch-22. That's true. I like that. Okay. And, and then also when it comes to employee relations. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, different companies have different uh, regulations about that. There yeah. are some companies where they'll allow guys to even have personal relationships. Yeah. But once you get married, then 
uh, one of you has to leave. Some, what? Yes, some oh. allow you to work together as long as you're not working in the same department. Yes. But for most Kenyan organizations, they frown upon personal relationships at work mm -hmm. because then you cause complications for also the people who you are working with. <laughs> this is true because everybody gets involved yes, in, your relationship. in your drama. Everybody gets involved in your drama. Please, those relationships you are having at the water dispenser, because you always start at uh -huh. the water dispenser. Yes. You meet at the water dispenser yes. and things just continue from there. So it, it, it's a murky situation. It is because yeah. sometimes um, in every relationship, you'll have a disagreement here and yes. there. So when the two of you disagree, it becomes like World War Three, also at the office, and <laughs> it ought to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. And yeah. so and so can't attend a meeting yes. because the other person yes. is there and you, know, yes. you have a project to do together. It becomes so, very so, complicated. Okay, okay. Yes. So you, you, you'd advise that we think twice before you yes. start dating yes. a colleague. Yes, okay. think okay. twice because um, at the end of it all, some th some relationships have succeeded. Yeah. I'll give an example of my brothers. He met his wife when they were in the bank. Oh. Yes, and they mm -hmm. succeeded and went the full distance. Yes. But there are some that won't go the full distance, especially young people. Yeah. It's it's a casual yes, thing. Yes, it's yeah. a casual yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes you'll find that now people become emotionally attached, yeah. which now causes problems mm -hmm. because now um once you two break up, what happens? Yes. Do we continue working together? What will the situation be like? Mm -hmm. uh, remember, sometimes I, I say this um, uh, in meetings, you're thinking, I've seen this person naked. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> The lines are so blind. Yeah, it becomes uh, uh, unrealistic to work together. It's so true. you can e you can easily exit yourself from a job okay. because of those relationships that we tend to have. I like that. Have. I think th I think that point touches home because it's it's something that's very common that happens with young employees. Yes. Uh, and then okay, lastly, in terms of um uh, in terms of uh, employee relations, before we move on to the next question, Lucy mm -hmm. is um how we should be professional in the office even if sour we are young we're vibrant and we're friends mm -hmm. that's another thing that i think also a lot of employers because even when you, dis when you have a chat with hr managers they say the problem with with young people you cannot contain them and how they behave in the true. office place very Maybe true you can touch a little bit on that before we, we move on to the next one okay mm -hmm. i think um here what we will be looking at is probably the leadership in in, yeah. the, in that particular office. Yeah. Because maybe you'll have two people who are friends and they work together. Yeah. You'll find one is very productive mm -hmm. and the other one is not as productive, but his friend or her friend keeps covering for yes. this other person. Mm. So for me, my advice would be the supervisor here should now come in and yeah. sit the person down mm -hmm. and explain, you know, this is work. I know you two are friends, but at some point you have to decide if you really want to be here. Yes. Because at the end of the day, it is your work that merits you being in an organization. Mm. You and your friend can be very pali pali and he can cover for you, yes. but it will get to a point the person will also get tired mm -hmm. of carrying your weight. Yeah. So you have to be personally accountable. Yes. Um, so for me, it is for them to just, as they get into the job market, they should realize that, okay, now I'm grown. Yeah. Now I'm an adult. These yeah. are some of my obligations. Mm -hmm. And also I want to excel mm -hmm. because as you're working, remember you're also building your CV. Yes. You're not likely to work in one company for the rest, the rest of, of your, your life. life. So yeah. even as you go elsewhere, they'll want to know what did you do at your previous job? Okay. What are some of the things you achieved? So yes. for them, they should look at it as an opportunity mm -hmm. to be the best version of themselves at that particular point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lucy Mutungi, who is the HR manager at Tangazo Letu, is Tangazo Letu rather, mm -hmm. is in studio with us, of course, um, answering some of the questions that you have. And that SMS number is 22162. If you want to get in touch with us through our social media platforms, well, they are still the same Y254 TV on Instagram as well as Facebook and Y254 channel on Twitter.